I'd like to call the Conserv Conservation Commission of Brookfield to order. Today is Tuesday, October 8th, 2024. It is 7.03 p.m. in attendance. We have Megan Metz, Scully Metz, Bill Meeker, and Sarah Campbell joining via teleconference. First item, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, the first item on the agenda is 20 Allen Road Emergency emergency tree cutting. Do we have anybody here from 20 Allen Road? All right, so I guess it can't be that much of an emergency then. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure who, did anybody actually see the pictures that kind of got sent out? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. we got them here. Um, so typically, I mean, the way that it's was this the person that came before and was getting no, more information? No, this is a someone, whole other one, this right? Is someone completely different. Yeah. Okay. And the question is, you know, he can't even answer this. But Sarah, do you know if anybody's even living there now? If what? If somebody's living there at uh, 20, Twenty Allen Road. Road. I have no idea. Oh. No, no, no. Can you hear me? Oh, no, yes, can, yes, okay. we can hear you. There was just something beeping okay, on Okay, perfect, sorry. I, I parked, so hopefully you guys can hear me, because I can hear you. <laughs> yes. All right, so this is, you sure this isn't somebody you've seen before? Sonia McKnight is the customer. Pasquale is just the arborist. Is the arborist, yes. Yep. Is that the one that you did the site visit on? So, no, I okay. haven't gone out there. Um, I did some research on the arborist. Um, he seems like he kind of knows what he's doing. Um, I don't know if somebody is living at 20 Allen Road. I don't know if it's being occupied. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know the status of it. At least from the pictures, it does look like it's a danger to the property, too. Well, that's no, it's, a summer, it's a summer, it's a summer, it's a summer house. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the, the, is that an ace house? I don't know. There's no name, so. Doesn't have a name no. there. So, yeah, so yeah. it's the 20 yeah. Allen Road. Yeah, it's a summer. So, I mean, okay. it, it's really hard to, to grant permission to somebody who doesn't even come before the commission, first of all. Um, secondly, I mean, we don't really know the extent to which there is damage. I mean, they're, you know, it's a dead tree. Um, it does say in here to, to avoid another building strike. And assuming means that something already fell on the building. Yeah. Is that what this picture here is on the back? Number picture number seven. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 Well. Um, now, also, you can see the holes in the. I mean, that looks like woodpecker heaven. Did they know about the meeting tonight? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you know, I the, the problem is I don't know which trees they're asking to cut down. Um, it says five standing dead, significantly declined, eighty percent defoliated hemlock trees, and one lightning struck pine. These trees are significant immediate risk hazards to property and homeowners. So normally we look at you know hundred feet buffer zone from the wetland mm -hmm. is where we're working within but since it looks like only one is within the buffer zone well the, the other thing is that since this is a great pond um, there's a whole bunch of different rules so they they expands you know, it yeah okay. so they're under a different set of regulations so um i think normally if it's a safety issue it's an exempt activity um, but i would like to suggest um, a few things um, definitely, I need to know exactly which trees will be coming down. I think that's something we should probably know. Mm -hmm. um, not just five trees on the property. We don't know which five they are. And the other condition would be that the stumps remain in place. Okay. So, um, what do you guys think? Should we table this so we can get them? I mean, we have another meeting in a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, it's only a delay of two weeks. It's not a delay of a whole month, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it truly is an emergency, they would have somebody here, I would think. So. Should we um, offer to do a site visit? Um, well, they need to yeah. show up first. I think if they showed up and told us things in person, that would be yeah. enough, right? Okay. Yeah. I can reach out and see if we can do a site visit. Um, okay. It should be easy enough. So. All right. Um, so we're going to table this then. We don't need a vote on this. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we'll table this till the next meeting, and then I'll follow up. Table. Okay. Next item on the agenda is uh, candidate review for conservation commission. So. Um, We've had three individuals come forward and request uh, to be on the Conservation Commission. So just for anybody here in attendance from the public, make it abundantly clear that uh, we do not make any decisions. We can make a recommendation to the select board as a commission. Um, anything that we say or do, uh, it's the ultimate decision of the select board who they choose to appoint to the Conservation Commission. Um, so does anybody have any com comments on uh, additions to the Conservation Commission at this point? I know there were the two members, you were one of them that showed up maybe about two months ago, and the third one, he I think he showed Mr. Hill, right? I think it was Mr. Hill. No, he, he's, he's not interested. Oh, he's not okay. interested, he no. withdrew his name? Yes, she did. <laughs> okay. And there's another third name? Yeah, I, I can't but, remember her name. She actually came before us uh, asking about the trees. That was her. Oh, that, oh that, so that's yeah. not even, okay. I, yeah. I have to look up her name. Um, I know you, I remember her. So she came before us on an issue, but not wanting to be on the board at that point. But then, No, she was interested. She expressed okay. interest at, uh, okay. at that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we do have another... So that's Miss Reeves Hall, um, and then we had um, the two from the previous meeting. So right now we have three open positions, uh, three open commissioner spots, and three candidates, and three candidates. Yep. So um, I mean, from what we've read and what we've seen so far, I really would say that there's. Nothing that precludes us from working with them, so I, I would wholeheartedly recommend they go before the select board, and the select board can make their ultimate decision based on whatever is put forward. I think we should be filling the slots. I agree. The sooner the better. Yeah, then we don't have to have quorum by by telephone. This is a temporary. Yeah. By telephone, yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so I'll uh, I'll reach out and have. Uh, Chris DeFalco send a message out to say that uh, any of those uh, individuals who have expressed interest, um, uh, we, we would recommend them go before the select board. Do they have to appear in person or? Uh, I don't remember that. Not, not, I think that, you guys are just allowed to vote on it. Yeah. They don't have to be there in person. Yeah, I, appoint, I didn't appear right? in person. I, I didn't appear in person. So, unless yeah, they yeah, change policies. I think it's up to them if the selectmen ask them to come in and go to the meeting. I think it's up to the selectmen. Okay. And Rich, do you guys know how often you vote on that? Is that like? Uh, we could get that on the next agenda item, so it wouldn't make it for Thursday. But the following Thursday, we'll meet again. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. And they could actually get sworn in before our next meeting. Ooh. Then you can sit on the other side of the table. <laughs> um, do we need to vote on this, or we don't have to vote on that? That's not no, I, I don't believe so because um, yeah. it's not binding in any way. So, yeah. Okay. So, third uh, agenda item would be open meeting law complaints. Uh, hashtag Chris or dash is dash nowadays dash Chris Kelleher. So, um, so we have three of them. The one I will bring up first. Um, and this is dated, well, they're all dated October 2nd, but this is in reference to August 15th, 2024. Mm -hmm. So that falls outside of the 30 day complaint window. So we are not going to address that. Is everybody okay with that? Oh, yeah, okay. perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So the See, the second one we'll look at would be the 961. 
ongoing 96 or 918. Probably should do the older one first, right? Uh, sure, we can do that. We, we prefer. Concrete sequential people, huh? I'm a historian, I work in order. <laughs> so, did you guys both get a chance to read these or did Dr. Yes, we did. Yes, I yep. believe that the gist is that um, he has, Chris, Mr. Kelleher has filed uh, four complaints and we have not responded um, in writing or asked for an extension so. from the Attorney General. Is that the gist of it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, are, are we required to respond in writing? I thought we were just responding by doing this. No, so what the requirements are is you have a meeting within 14 business days yep. and correspond with the AG as well as the complainant. Okay. So a little bit of background. So since I did so since I did step into the, the chair role a little bit um, in a rushed manner, um, the ways of working weren't really established at that point. Um, so traditionally, I understood uh, in previous roles that uh, in, in other towns, sometimes a clerk handles, handles that matter. So uh, there's just some poor communication on, on my part and as well as uh, the clerk and even the town administrator about who was going to be handling this and, and following up. So. Uh, rest assured, all of these complaints have been addressed. Um, there's been a communication to the uh, AG as well as the complainant. And uh, at this point, uh, I'm ready to say that we can kind of close this. But uh, as far as what my response would be, uh, I'll read that to you. Okay. Uh, so the meetings all occurred within 15 days with the exception of one complaint. Uh, this delay was due to postponement of a meeting due to lack of quorum regarding communication following the meeting because of a chair uh, uh, because of a change in chair responsibilities were not clear as to whom would be sending up responses this issue has been resolved and the chair will be sending responses to the AG as well as the complainant should future complaints arise I think it's pretty concise uh, anything anybody would like to add Sarah nope. Seems straightforward and honest to me. Okay, so we're okay with that then. Uh, yep. do, you, do you agree, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Sarah's okay. good. So everybody's okay if I just send that response off then? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And the third one's dated uh, regarding the alleged violation of uh, the 9th, 19th of September. Uh, this is actually a repeat. Um, and I'll let you know that... Uh, in consultation with town council, with the all boards clerk and the town administrator. Um, the wording is not ambiguous. Uh, and in fact, the wording of uh, any of these uh, moves to executive session is pretty standard. Um, so, sorry for the public here, the actual complaint was that the the, the complaint was that our um, our wording in the move to executive session as well as in the agenda was not sufficient and needed to be uh, more elaborate and, and actually have more detail about why. Um, and it's, it's pretty clear in Mass General Law that if the why can somehow undermine the purpose of your move to executive session, and uh, especially in terms of litigation or collective bargaining, you don't need to state that. Um, so I double checked, made sure that um, we had the support of town clerk and the AB clerk. Um, so okay. um, I'm sorry, town, town administrator. Just uh, so is that clear? What the? Oh yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yep. So my my response that I penned the uh, plan to send. Um, uh, Regarding the complaint filed on 10 24 re the executive session and agenda citation reads as follows. Uh, this is a mass general law citation. To discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. As is directly stated in Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21A3, this was clearly stated on the agenda and also read in the motion. The commission feels that all provisions were followed with emphasis on the third. 
before the executive session, the chair shall state the purpose for the executive session, stating all subjects that may be revealed without compromising the purpose for which the executive session was called. So that's the point in contention. Um, and we believe, at least I believe, that uh, in order to state that, were we to state the reason for executive session would have compromised the purpose. I agree. I agree. Um, the commission felt it was in best interest to not discuss, not disclose more information regarding the move to executive session. And the commission agrees there's no violation. All right. Anything else to add? Nope. That fulfills all our obligations. We need to vote, right? I don't think we need to vote, right? No. Nope. No. Nope. I'll just, just as long as you guys are okay with me handling that, I will go ahead and handle yes. that. Perfectly fine with that. Okay. I have a question, Bill. Uh oh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, have we like reached out to AG to see if we have to keep responding to these open meeting law complaints that Mr. Kelher is filing or not? Is this possible? Is that possible? So any citizen with the town is within their legal rights to file an open meeting law complaint. Um, whether or not it's justified, whether or not it's upheld, supported or not, um, so anybody, anytime, any place can go ahead and file an open meeting law complaint. Um, our, our duty is to meet within 15 days uh, and, and respond to both the AG and the complainant. Did I answer that question? Yeah. I think what, and I'm wondering the same thing, is there a limit to that after something not, has repeatedly happened? Not unless legislation. Yeah, because like, uh, like, not to be mean, not to cut you off, but like also the problem is, is like, the reason why we have a, a phone call quorum is because like we're not meeting on our regular scheduled meetings. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, yeah. So it's like I like we all have other obligations. Like I am on two other boards in Brookfield, and I am on a board in the town that I work in. So it's like I don't have time to be having a meeting, sitting in a parking lot, to be able to have a to, to be able to have a quorum to discuss an open meeting law complaint. Like I don't have the time. This is a waste of my time. Like. Well, aye, aye, aye. I, I agree with you in terms of, um, you know, it does take a lot of time. Um, it does take a lot of resources, not only our resources, but uh, resources of the AG. But the only thing I can stand behind is, is that that's, that is the right of the citizen. And I so, get it. And I understand if, like, he had, like, legit concerns. And maybe this is just my opinion. And I guess I can get crucified for this, whatever. But it'd be different, I guess, in my opinion, if he had actual literal concerns and I don't know I feel like they're not legit concerns so I guess that's also my point well, and point, that's my opinion point so. taken but we do need to address them every time yes so. I know I know yep. until well, until legislation changes so well hopefully with new, the new committee members that will help um, add more resources yes and, yes yeah yeah that, that's a great great point so all right, so can we consider uh, the open meeting law complaints closed then? Yes. All right, yes. so we'll move on to financials. Financials. All right, so we just have the WME Mason invoices. Um, and these are just, you guys have these or not? Mm -hmm. oh, you may not have them. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, oh, these are supplies, office supplies this is for uh, Albert's clerk. Toner and uh, sure. clips and other assorted uh, office supplies. And, yeah, and I think we're splitting the are we splitting the cost also? I think right. Two other yeah, boards. yeah, we are. Yep, we are. Yes. So I'll make a motion to approve. I second the motion. Well, we need to have the motion no. for the amount. Um, yeah, what's, what's the, the amount? Total. Or is that? So the 51, the total between the, the yes. Yeah, so, so what I'll say is because we don't have it broken down, and I'm not sure how he's planning on dividing it out. Why don't we approve up to that amount, and the amount is 51.49. So can right, we? I'll make a motion to approve 51.49. Mason for the amount that Bill said. For up to. Yep. Up to. Up to. Yes. I second the motion. Any discussion? Nope. Nine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Actually, since we have a recorder, can we just do a roll call on that, please? Okay. Megan Metz, aye. Aye. Scully. Bill Meeker. Sarah, aye. Bill Meeker, aye. All right. 
Um, I have one more thing with financials. I know we probably can't talk about it because it's not on our agenda. But last meeting we discussed taking those classes through MCC. Um, yeah, so that's probably more of a logistical thing. Um, okay. Should we handle that at the next meeting? Um, send me a message and I'll see if we need to add it to the agenda or if okay. we can handle it offline. All right, okay. thank you. And with that, that is our last agenda item for this particular meeting. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second. Megan Metz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting's closed. Meeting's right. closed. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. That's Bye. our end. Bye. Bye.